everyone. Hope everyone is safe and sound and staying at home. I'm Aritha Hug and I'm once again back on our lesson day with the physics lesson. And the topic which we will be discussing about is heat. So without any further delay, let's just get started. So to begin with, um, what is heat actually? So heat is basically the form of energy that is transferred between two substances at different temperatures. Flowing from the high temperature system to the low temperature system is what heat is. It is also referred to as heat energy or thermal energy. Heat is typically measured in calories or joules. So here, as you can see in this image, here is a warmer object and here is a cooler object. So as I mentioned earlier, heat is the transfer of um, energy from warm object to a cool object. So here the heat is being transferred from a warm object to a cool object. So when talking about heat, one thing comes into our mind for sure and that is temperature. So the direction of energy flow is from the substance of higher temperature to the substance of low temperature as we discussed. So heat and temperature are often used interchangeably, but this is incorrect. Temperature is nothing but the measure of hotness or coldness of matter. So if we state it in another way, temperature is the average kinetic energy per molecule of a substance. It is measured in degrees on the Celsius or Fahrenheit scale or in Kelvins. In simplest terms, temperature is how hot or how cold an object is, while heat is the energy that flows from a hotter object to a cooler object. So say for example, um, doesn't coffee feel hot when you touch it? But why does this happen? So the temperature of a cup of coffee may feel hot if we put our hand around the cup. So it is hot because heat from the coffee is being transferred to the cup. And that is why whenever we are touching the cup of coffee, the, we feel the warmth because the hot coffee is uh, transferring the heat to the cup. And that is why our hand feels warmth whenever we touch a cup of hot coffee. So now we are going to talk about temperature versus internal energy. So um, what is uh, total internal energy? As we have discussed about temperature, now let's discuss about what is internal energy. So the total internal energy of a substance is the total of the kinetic energies of all of its molecules. It depends on the temperature of the substance and the total amount of substance, which means the number of molecules. So it's possible for two objects to have the same total internal energy while having entirely different temperatures. This is very important. I'm going to repeat that it's possible for two objects to have the same total internal energy while having entirely different temperatures. For example, a cooler object will have a lower average kinetic energy per molecule, but if the number of molecules is large, then it can still end up with the same total internal energy of a warmer object with fewer molecules. A surprising result of this relationship between total internal energy and temperature is the fact that a large block of ice can end up with more energy than a lit match head even though the match head is so hot and it's on fire. Now, uh, moving on to the most interesting part, which is how heat actually transfers. So there are three methods uh, through which heat energy transfers from one object to another. So they are conduction, convection, and radiation. So what is conduction at first? So conduction is a type of heat transfer that occurs in solid materials only. It can be described as a process by which heat transfer occurs from molecule to molecule by direct conduct. The molecules themselves do not necessarily change positions but they simply vibrate more or less quickly against each other to transfer the heat. In other words, conduction occurs when two objects at different temperature are in contact with each other and therefore heat travels from the warmer object towards the colder object until they are both at the same temperature. For example, touching a hot cup of coffee as I described earlier. Next moving on to what is convection. So convection occurs in liquids and gases and describes 
the movement of heat from one location to another facilitated by the movement of fluid or liquid. When heated, fluid expands and becomes less dense. The hot fluid rises and displaces the cold fluid located above it, pushing down towards the heat source. The cold fluid will become heated and rise upwards, creating a constant flow of fluid from an area of high heat to an area of low heat. For example, boiling water. Next, moving on to the third way, which is radiation. So radiation is the process of heat transfer in which heat is transferred without any medium or physical contact in the form of electromagnetic waves. Radiation does not rely upon any contact between the heat source and the heat object. No mass is exchanged and no medium is required in the process of radiation. So as you can see in this image, uh, radiation uh, is taking place uh, so heat waves are uh, flowing towards the container which is being uh, heated so this is how radiation actually occurs uh, for example heat from a stove burner so thank you everyone for watching today's video uh, that was all about today's video I really really hope you enjoyed it and in the next video we will learn more about heat so thank you everyone have a good day once again